These are stories that give real life lessons, lessons that we take with us and apply to how we live our lives in a meaningful way, in an appropriate way, in a God-fearing way. And, you know, when you take those lessons and then you connect them to the places where those stories occurred, you know, they're no longer, they're not legends. I mean, these are real, true stories. They actually happened. And they happened at these places. So when you have the privilege of going to these places, and most of them, most of these stories took place in what people call the West Bank. Welcome to a very special edition of Praise from Washington, D.C. I'm joined by two men who really need no introduction, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman. We can also, gentlemen, add two new titles to your resume, movie stars. You are the stars of the brand new TBN film, Route 60, The Biblical Highway, in theaters nationwide. September 18th and 19th. Gentlemen, we will talk about the film, but we also want to give everyone a broader kind of geopolitical world events overview. Of course, you two were high-level officials in the Trump administration. You were in the room when major decisions were made in the Middle East and really throughout the world. So we want to unpack that with you a bit as well. Secretary, let's start with you. Since you and Ambassador Friedman left your post in January 2021, what do you see as the state of the world? We'll talk about the Pompeo Doctrine, um, your worldview as Secretary of State. What is the state of things right now in the United States, in particular in the Middle East and in the foreign policy realm? Well, thanks for having me on. It's great to be back with you again. Uh, look, uh, when we left in January of 2021, uh, there was peace breaking out all across the Middle East. It was uh, not by accident, it was, it was by a lot of hard work. Uh, certainly the Lord was watching over it, um, but we were diligent, we were focused on this. And unfortunately the current administration has gone back to some of the same ideas that had prevented that peace for decades. Ideas that, this is an, uh, that the West Bank is somehow occupied by the Israelis. Um, ideas that somehow uh, you can negotiate with the Iranians and make the Middle East a safer place. Those were ideas that we just rejected. They didn't, they didn't reflect the reality as we had come to see it. Uh, and it's not about politics. This is about you know, the fact that we've had lots of Americans have to go and fight and risk their lives in that place over the last decades. And to the extent you can build out a secure, stable security relation, set of relationships where the Gulf states can come to understand that Israel is a great security partner and a great economic partner, and, so, and, and they're good people, and you can build that out in the way that we were able to do with lots of great leaders being part of it. Uh, sadly, I think we're heading back in a direction that makes the chance of that extending of the peace uh, much less likely, and it saddens me greatly. Yeah, Secretary, we're gonna talk more about that. Ambassador Friedman, of course, you were in the middle of the historic embassy move in Jerusalem. The Trump administration obviously recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. You're out of your post now, of course, but you still, still spend time in Israel frequently. Uh, what is your sense of things on the ground, in the land, the land of Israel right now? Well, look, I, I'm, I'm grateful that the, uh, the move of the embassy appears to be permanent because it is so popular really with, with all Americans, and thank God for that. Um, Israel's going through a rough patch. Uh, they've got a lot of internal debates about what the country should look like, how it should be governed. Issues that have been around since the beginning of the state, but are sort of percolating up right now for, uh, uh, not, not surprisingly to me. Um, what I'm disappointed in uh, mostly is the American, uh, if, I, if you will, interference with that process. I mean, this is hard enough for Israel on its own. They have to get through some difficult issues about, you know, uh, you know, the separation of powers, you know, between the Knesset and the Supreme Court, who, uh, you know, who trumps who, who has the ultimate decision. It's a tough issue. It's a legitimate issue. And they'll have to work it out. But let them work it out. And, and don't make it uh, an, an American issue. Uh, one thing that we never did, you know, we respected Israel's democracy and we allowed them to go through their internal issues, just as we would expect them to extend the same courtesy to us. You know, when people were talking about packing the Supreme Court because they didn't like the outcome of their various decisions, you didn't hear uh, Netanyahu, you know, go on TV and say that's a bad idea or a good idea. It was none of his business. And frankly, it's none of our business how Israel resolves these issues. Instead, we have a government that is, uh, you know, very much got their thumb on the scale. Uh, you know, as you know, uh, the prime minister of Israel has not been invited. 
to the uh, to the White House. The prior Prime Minister Naftali Bennett was invited. Uh, I think uh, Biden, you know, has has made it clear that that's not something happening anytime soon. And he, by the way, Ambassador, has a long-standing relationship with yeah. Bibi Netanyahu. Yeah, he calls him Bibi, and he yeah. says he knows him, but he doesn't uh, consider that to be uh, enough of a reason to bring him over, even though it's our most cherished, most important ally in the region, if not the world. So that is, uh, that is a disappointment. And it's not just a matter of courtesy. It's a matter of the signal it sends to the region that, you know, whenever there is a signal by the United States that there is daylight between America and Israel, it then encourages um, terrorists, it encourages Israel's enemies, and encourages our enemies. And we're seeing that on the ground. We're seeing a rise in terror attacks that you know is is pretty uh, serious. Yeah, including in Judea and Samaria, gentlemen, which the world calls the West Bank. It is the biblical heartland. The Bible calls it Judea and Samaria, and is it is the scene for the film Route 60, the biblical <laughs> highway, Ambassador. We'll talk about your role in, or, and your heart, I should say, for Judea and Samaria in a second, going back years. But Secretary, uh, when you were Secretary of State, you made some pretty major announcements in regard to Judea and Samaria and Israel's historic and ancient claim uh, to that region. Tell us more about that, your perspective on why Israelis, Jews, have every <laughs> right to live in the same regions they lived in 3,000 years ago. You know, it's interesting. It, people talk about it's historic and groundbreaking, and I just think about 3,000 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just the, the, that what we did was simply reflect the reality, the history of this being the proper homeland of the Jewish people for 3,000 years, including Judea and Samaria. Yeah. And so we had a lot of history, American history, that we had to clear out, a lot of underbrush, a lot of, uh, I won't get too far in the weeds, but suffice it to say, for, for decades, and this was bipartisan, no president had been prepared to simply make declarative statements about Israel and its place in the world and the way we were. And so, you know, the, the movement of the embassy, President Trump was remarkable. Um, so many other presidents had just refused to do that. I, I give him full credit for um, having made that. But we could all see that if we got this right, if we, if we spoke about history and the reality and the way that it was, that we didn't risk World War III. This was always the implicit threat. If you, if you make a statement, uh, sim as simple as this is not land occupied by the Israelis. This is not an apartheid nation, right? This is th these, not every settlement that is in Judea and Samaria is unlawful, which had been the American position for an awfully long time. Just these simple statements, yeah. it, it turns out the rest of the world goes, yeah, no, that, that's right. Uh, yeah. that, that makes some sense. And you don't get World War III. What you get is serious engagement on a sound footing that can deliver better lives for everyone. Yeah. Christians, Jews, Arabs, everyone living in that space is in a better place as a result of what we did. It can be said that for everything we wish to learn or want to become, there is a road to follow. From the beginning, the road to believing in only one true God, the maker of heaven and earth, has carved its roots through the ancient land of Israel. It is a road that Abraham, the father of nations, walked as the first believer in monotheism. It was along this road that God made his covenant with Abraham, promising that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. It is a road walked by Jesus, the central figure of Christianity. This road is deeply symbolic in the story of God shared by Jews and Christians. And it is a literal highway that bisects modern Israel, where it is now known simply as Route 60. Route 60 follows the ancient path from Nazareth to Beersheba. It connects many holy sites and biblical events in what could be called the original Bible Belt. It has mile markers, human and divine, to memorialize the acts of celebration, suffering and salvation that are woven into Israel's history. I'm David Friedman, and I invite you to join me and my co-host and fellow traveler, Mike Pompeo, 
as we explore the ancient mysteries of Route 60, the biblical highway. Folks, the film is called Route 60. You can go to route60.movie for more information in theaters nationwide. September 18th and 19th, we are joined, of course, by former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, uh, David Friedman. David, I mentioned your heart for Judea and Samaria. To you, this is, it's common sense, first of all, that look, uh, from a security perspective, we can go on and on why Israel should have a presence in Judea and Samaria. Uh, but for you, it's also a matter of the heart and a matter of your faith. Tell us more about that, your connection, your personal connection to Judea and Samaria, and why you believe our viewers and people who go to see this movie will connect with that region as well. Well, look, Eric, uh, I think as you know, I'm the son of a rabbi, and I spent probably uh, the first 12 years of my education uh, studying the Bible in Hebrew, and, uh, and it, it resonated with me from early, early uh, years. Now, that Bible, okay, that Old Testament that I studied, uh, is full of stories. And these aren't just stories, these are stories that give real life lessons, lessons that we take with us and apply to how we live our lives in a meaningful way, in an appropriate way, in a God-fearing way. And, you know, when you take those lessons and then you connect them to the places where those stories occurred, you know, they're no longer, they're not legends. I mean, these are real, true stories. They actually happened. And they happened at these places. So when you have the privilege of going to these places, and most of them, most of these stories took place in what people call the West Bank. You know, that's, that's the land. I mean, when Jews <laughs> were given this land, you know, I mean, I love Tel Aviv. I think it's a great city. But Tel Aviv is not a biblical city, right? I mean, uh, neither is Haifa. You know, when, when Jews were given the land, they were given what people call the West Bank. And, and to me, it's painful. When I hear, you know, people talk about the biblical heartland of the Jewish people not belonging to the Jewish people, that somehow it's outrageous, it's unlawful, it's, it's apartheid for the Jewish people to live in the land promised them by God uh, in the land where all the stories took place. And in a world today where we live, where I think we've become uh, so untethered from our you know, biblical values as, as a nation, you, know, uh, you, you look around and you get very confused about you know, what, what's life really about, what's important, what's meaningful, what should we be doing? Yeah. Well, this brings it right back to the basics, to the basics, the basic values that I think made our nation a great nation, made Judaism and Christianity great faiths, and it's all there. And so returning there, I think, is, is the key to, to living a, a good, God-fearing, meaningful life. And by the way, Ambassador, you can tell in the film, I was thinking throughout and watching with your biblical knowledge or biblical storytelling, certainly you are the son of a rabbi. And <laughs> same with you, Secretary Pompeo, former Sunday school teacher. And that really shines through. And I, gentlemen, I think that's what's so unique about the film. Former, obviously, high-ranking U.S. officials, you're still in the mix on the geopolitical scene in a major way. And yet, it was almost, I think you were discussing off camera, almost uh, as believers, kind of almost a childlike quality when you came <laughs> upon some of these sites along Route 60. Um, we want to talk more about that. But I did want to ask you, I touched on the security perspective of it, gentlemen. Look, Judea and Samaria, not only the biblical heartland, obviously so much controversy in the world, these, these pictures painted of wild-eyed Israeli settlers. But break it down for from a security perspective. Um, Samaria is a mountainous region. And if Israel gave this land over, the land which Route 60 winds through, if Israel was to give that region up, that would be a security liability for the state of Israel, it seems. Secretary, what are your thoughts on that? When you walk the road and you then travel to your point, travel to, we're, we're talking about a, a very small place. <laughs> Uh, this is not, we think as Americans, we think about the expanse of the United States. Um, this is a place that is difficult to secure, and the Israelis do amazing work in doing that, securing it for everyone. We should be mindful, not just for Jews, but for Christians and Arabs and non-believers. Uh, this, is, this is the lone democracy and the safest place in the Middle East. Sometimes we see the pictures and we see the smoke and we think, oh, this is just cowboys and Indians of old, right? Yeah. Um, it's not that way. You, when you see this movie, when folks watch the movie, they will come to see that most of this is just people living, trying to find their way yeah. through and that there are mm -hmm. simply bad actors, um, bad actors in this place that have agendas that are deeply inconsistent with the history of the place. And so the mission that we all have is to try and bring people together in a way that reflects the history, the rightful history, 
And we, we know what happens when Israel gives this up. We, we can see it today in the Gaza Strip. We can see what Hamas has built there, the terror organization underwritten by Iran in that place. Uh, we should all be mindful as we think about how to continue to deliver security uh, that simply walking away to handing this over to uh, a set of leaders that live in that place today in Ramallah um, is not something that would secure peace for anyone in the region. And folks, by the way, just a reminder, Israel is the size of the state of New Jersey with its current borders. I guess it would be roughly the size of Delaware if it were to give away uh, <laughs> Judea and Samaria. Many have called those indefensible borders. Again, Route60.movie, September 18th and 19th, theaters nationwide. If you want to hear more great insights like this, from Ambassador Friedman and Secretary Pompeo, but with a biblical perspective even better, please go see the movie. I can tell you, folks, this film is completely unique, uh, so well produced, gentlemen. Your insights, amazing. And you're going to places where even I have never set foot. I've been to Israel many, many times. <laughs> and certainly I think many of our viewers will have their eyes wide open and say, wow, this is really the Bible uh, coming to life. Ambassador Friedman, when I think of Judea, Samaria, this region, the biblical heartland, which again, Route 60 winds through, and people move out there um, to live, and of course there are controversial areas in the world's eyes, but it reminds me almost of people kind of moving out to the suburbs, the exurbs here in the <laughs> United States. You're going out there, maybe lower cost of living, fresh air, better quality of life, a uh, better quality of life for your family. It seems that many of the people who live in Judea and Samaria are actually secular. Is is that true? Yeah, it's true. And I think they get a ridiculously bad rap, you know, from <laughs> the mainstream media. Uh, look, I, I'm i well acquainted with, with the entire community. And it's it's large. There's about a half a million Jewish people living in Judea and Samaria. And, uh, and, you know, since the world considers Jerusalem as well, you know, illegally occupied, you know, another three four hundred thousand Jews living in East Jerusalem that uh, that the the world considers uh, yeah. to be illegal um, look they're um, they, they're all they, they are the the entire fabric of, of Israel from secular to to religious I mean to ultra orthodox they're they, they they are not at all a, a hostile people they are not um, looking for a fight they are not looking to uh, Put uh, you know to, to to be provocative. They're looking, as you point out, to live their lives in peace, and um, and and I think that's now you know you'll you'll have uh, in any society uh, a small group of people where if they are provoked, they will respond probably inappropriately occasionally, and uh, and that gets a hundred percent of the of the media attention, not ninety nine percent, a hundred percent of the media attention, and the other you know. The other, the other almost entire rest of the time when people are living, and by the way, there there are many um, there are many uh, you know factories and uh, industrial centers in Judea and Samaria uh, where Jews and, uh, and and Palestinians work together, and, uh, and and those are the most uh, successful examples of of coexistence. But there are others as well, and um, and and look, I think if you ask anybody living there, they'll say we want to live with the Palestinians. We're not looking to evict anybody. We want to live together. We want to work together. We think we can prosper together. Um, and, uh, and that's their view. Um, there, there's no one, I literally, no one that I've spoken with who wants to uh, evict any peaceful Palestinian from their territory. No one. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. I've filmed for TBN at some of those factories, Ambassador, in Samaria. And there are many Palestinians working there. Sure. And they make a better wage in Israel than they would in the West Bank. So very interesting. You mentioned Jerusalem, Ambassador. I want to touch, if we're talking broader geopolitical Middle East, we need to touch on Iran eventually, and I think that ties into the Pompeo Doctrine. But gentlemen, Jerusalem. You mentioned Jerusalem. Um, look, 2018, obviously, the historic move of the embassy to God's one and only holy city. Ambassador, we've talked many times about this. You are the first ambassador to serve at that Jerusalem embassy. But Secretary Pompeo, take us inside Foggy Bottom, uh, not too far from here, the State Department, which hasn't always been seen necessarily as a pro-Israel branch of the government, perhaps. Eric, uh, a very diplomatic of you. You, you. you might be able to work there. I'm in D.C. I'm trying. I'm learning from you, Secretary. Uh, but hey, obviously, earth-shattering announcement, not shattering for people like us who say, right on, about time. 
But at the State Department, and you're at the helm, you had, I want people to realize how courageous this was of Secretary Pompeo, Ambassador Friedman, uh, to push this in, in a meaningful way. You had to have a lot of pushback, I would imagine, yeah. uh, as you started discussing so, this. So, Eric, I was actually still at the CIA. I uh, was the CIA director when the, the embassy move took place. Right. Uh, but very connected with Secretary Tillerson at the time in the yeah. State Department, working these issues in Judea and Samaria, security focused as the CIA director, so I could see this. You should know the Central Intelligence yeah. Agency largely shared the views of the State Department with respect to, yeah. to how to keep the, they, they would view it as how do you keep the lid on this thing? How do you reflect this and, and how do you not advantage the nation of Israel versus the people who are living, uh, the Arabs who are living in the West Bank? And so there was enormous pushback. Yeah. Uh, there was the specter that had been raised for so long, which is uh, there'll be, uh, you know, the the next intifada, or worse yet, the Iranians will become involved. This, this will escalate in a way that is uncontrollable and unforeseeable and we can, yeah. but I knew, and I think David knew, um, we, we knew that that was, that was, a, that was a view that if, if it had ever been true, no longer existed. Yeah. That leaders in Arab countries in the world, around the world understood that the Palestinians had blown every opportunity to make peace yeah. and that we needed to find a path forward towards peace Ir, uh, regardless of uh, what the the leaders of the Palestinian Authority wanted to do, and so President Trump uh, moved against you know uh, large pieces of the uh, establishment, of the State Department, at the Central Intelligence Agency, nearly everyone who would have worked for David in the embassy, yeah. and took a decision, and it, it has turned out to be not only important and decent and right, um, but has reflected our understanding of what would really happen in the world after such a move. Uh, David's point about it being permanent is a glorious thing. I'm confident that it is, and that will be a good thing, not only for the nation of Israel, but for all people. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.